chasing the police every single day. This is free speech. <laughs> Good morning, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to reserve five minutes for appeal, Your or for uh, rebuttal, please, Your Honor. May it please the court. Your Honor, before the court is Andrew Sheets versus State uh, 6023577. My name is Christopher Cosden. Um, I represent Mr. Sheets, who is the appellant here. He was the defendant below. This case arose on uh, July 22nd of 2021 when Mr. Sheets. We're, we're familiar with the facts of the case. Sir? We're familiar with the facts of the case. We actually do read the briefs and, and the. Uh, record. So uh, let's just ad address the you know, legal issues, if you wouldn't mind. Your Honor, this case raises two important sets of issues. The first has to do with sufficiency, sufficiency of the evidence. Mr. Sheets was charged with the breach of the peace, and he was convicted of that, and with disruption of a school function. There was not sufficient evidence to prove either of those to the extent that the case should have gone to the jury. Um, to prove the crime of breach of the peace, the state must prove that the defendant committed an act or acts that were of a nature that corrupted the public morals, outraged the sense of public decency, or affected the peace of quiet of persons who witnessed the acts. Now, the Florida Supreme Court interpreted that in State v. Saunders, where the Supreme Court held, we now limit the application of section 877.03 so that it shall hereafter only apply either to words which by their very utterance inflict injury or tend to incite an immediate breach of the peace. The court went on to say, we construe the statute so that no words except, quote, fighting words, end quote, or words like shouts of fire in a crowded theater fall within its prescription in order to avoid the constitutional problem of overbreadth. Um, section 877.03 should not be read to prescribe the use of language in any fashion whatsoever. Well. What we are lacking here is proper words. There were certainly no words which, if spoken, would be inherently dangerous. Nor were there words that incited 
anyone to a breach of the peace. The police officer. You don't think that parents uh, at an elementary school where there's a, a man there and he's got obscenities and, uh, and he's got pictures on his shirt of uh, aborted fetuses uh, that that isn't going to uh, outrage and spark action by parents who want to protect children of such a tender age? That certainly could happen. However, here there's no evidence that it did. None of the parents testified. The only people who testified about the actions of the defendant were the police officer I just mentioned and an administrator from the school. The administrator from the school had nothing to say um, of any import about what Mr. Sheets actually said. The police officer testified that he believed that the words were not directed at him and he was certainly not incited to fight. None of the parents testified. We do not know what the parents thought because there was no evidence to tell us what the parents thought. Sir, wasn't there a, a video? There was a video. And didn't the video show a parent that uh, confronted him and he had the bullhorn? And uh, you know, so we we do have that evidence as to how parents, at least that parent, reacted. One set of parents, or at least one parent, we don't know who the male uh, um, companion was, but one parent apparently returned after dropping off a child with a bullhorn and a siren. Um, she set off the bullhorn, she set off the siren. Um, there, was no con there was no direct confrontation between that parent and Mr. Sheets. We see that very clearly on the uh, video recording. The Okay, the altercation across the street apparently occurred when a police officer drove up in a car and directly confronted. We don't know why Mr. Sheets retreated across the street. It's if, if, of the yes, the parent was obviously the parent was obviously annoyed. But the fact that the parent did that told us the parent was annoyed. But counter protests are not something that is unusual or or uh, even too surprising. We often see one person or one group of people protesting in public and other people protesting for the other side of whatever the issue is. Now, he was calling people Nazis and uh, using uh, a phrase that, uh, what's the baseball movie, the Costner, uh, Bull Durham, uh, that, that they said you couldn't call umpires. Uh, you don't think that, but you never saw that movie again. No, sir, I, uh, I didn't. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I don't want just to soon not use the phrase, but in any event, you know, calling people Nazis and suggesting that uh, that they engage in fellatio, uh, you don't think that, that that's uh, sufficient at an elementary school uh, with parents dropping kids off to constitute fighting words? Your Honor, the law does not recognize a venue. Now, certainly some words are not to be spoken in church. Certainly some words are not supposed to, should not be spoken in the presence of small children. Um, however, there's no evidence 
that Mr. Sheets ever went on the school property. There's no, there's no evidence that any child ever heard anything that Mr. Sheets said. So, uh, do you think these parents became outraged because only they were hearing it? I think the parents became outraged because somebody was protesting in front of the school. And you don't think that had anything to do with the words that they were saying that their children. Well, perhaps the parents were outraged, but there's no evidence that the outrage extended to being fighting words. There was no fight. Nobody, there were no fisticuffs you by anybody. Wait, you don't have to wait for a fight for words to constitute fighting words. Do you have any case law that supports that, your proposition, that there has to actually be a physical confrontation? No, Your Honor, there does not need to be a physical confrontation, but the physical confrontation has to be likely. And here, the words that were spoken did not apparently cause anybody to fight or come close to a fight. Nobody got out of their car and approached Mr. Sheets with a raised fist. That could have happened. Had that happened, that evidence would certainly suggest that the words spoken were fighting words, but that didn't happen. So when we have one person only uttering language and no evidence at all that Mr. Sheets um, intended or caused anybody to approach him in a manner which would suggest that a fight was about to start. Well, he'd been there uh, you know, a couple days before. He knew exactly what was going to happen when he went there. One could infer that, but we don't know what happened. Well, we do know. In fact, that's yet another issue in this case. Uh, we know probably too much about what happened on the earlier days, but there's no evidence of any uh, incipient fight on either of the earlier days. But let me address uh, disruption of an educational activity, if I may, please. The second charge in this case was also not proven. There was no evidence at all that any educational activity was disrupted. Now, as we all are perfectly well aware, an elementary, the function of an elementary school is education, and the model of education is usually classroom instruction. There, does, that, does that mean that the kids actually can get to a classroom and get there on time? Is that part yes. Of it? There and was, they, and they couldn't do that here. There was no evidence as to what students were late, how many students were late, or more important, whether there were more students late that day than any other day. The other, the other part of that is there is no evidence at all, not one scintilla of evidence, that any student missed any part of any classroom instruction. Now, the state could put on evidence that that happened, if it had happened, but at this point, we don't know that any classroom instruction was missed. Now, let me go on to the um, second part of this, which uh, the court has already raised in the question, and that is the evidence of prior bad acts. Now, there are two problems with the evidence of prior bad acts. The first one has to do with the notice that was given. Of course, there's a notice that's required in 90.404. Um, prior to trial in the motion in limine, um, counsel for the defendant stated to the court that he had never received the notice. The prosecutor responded with, oh, I filed the notice. Well, he certainly did file the notice. It's on page 39 of the record. The question is whether or not it was served. And there was no testimony or no comments from counsel in connection with that motion in limine. Uh, to exclude the um, similar bad act evidence, that um, the defendant's attorney ever actually received the notice. He said that he didn't. Nobody said that he did. 
Now, that alone should resolve the issue. The statute requires the notice and the notice must be, the statute specifically requires that the notice be provided to the defendant or counsel for the defendant. Okay. The other part of that is that the evidence of prior bad acts was much, much more extensive than the direct evidence. Did the, uh, going back to the filing of the notice, did the notice have a certificate of service on it? It did. And uh, was the certificate of service to uh, Mr. Sheets's counsel? It was. The certificate of service is on page 39. The certificate of service says, I hereby certify that your true and correct copy of the above and foregoing has been furnished to naming the attorney um, by United States mail slash hand delivery slash electronic transmission and a uh, type signature. Now, that notice does not comply with the rule. If we look at rule 2.516, we see, and this is in uh, B1 of 2.516, we see that all documents required or permitted to be served on another party must be served by email with some exceptions that have no application here. The rule goes on to say the filer of an electronic document must verify that the portal or other e-service system uses the names and email addresses provided by the parties. Well, there is nothing in that certificate of service that so states. The prosecutor, when he served that document, did not state that he served it through the portal. He did not state that he served it by email. He did not state to whom he served it. So did he represent that the court? He represented that he had filed the document. He did not represent that he served it or that opposing counsel had it. His responsibility under the statute and the rule was to ensure either that the trial counsel actually had it or that it had been served in a very specific way required by rule. He did not do that either verbally or um, in his certificate of service. So if um, I may reserve the rest of my time for rebuttal, please. Thank you. Good morning, Blaine Goff on behalf of the Apple the state of Florida. May it please the court, counsel. Um, first addressing the sufficiency of the evidence when it comes to the breach of the peace charge. Um, as the court has uh, stated, the jury was presented with a video. The video showed probably um, picked up where uh, the parent dropped out their kid, came back with a bullhorn and confronted um, Mr. Sheets. Also, it, it's observed that parents exiting the school onto Naranja Street were engaging with uh, Mr. Sheets in a, in, in a hostile manner, um, both engaging back and forth. It showed the, uh, the shirt, the sign, um, just his demeanor and uh, the officer approaching Mr. Sheets, kind of asking, requesting, take your protest somewhere else outside of the, the school area. Um, the jury was able to hear uh, the resident, Mr. Jewell, who called the police, was awoken from his uh, from sleeping, um, actually, uh, and called the police due to the uh, altercation between Mr. Sheets and the other parents. I believe that also shows it wasn't just one parent, it was more than one, and had not the intervention of the officer, uh, it, it, it of course could have become more violent situation. Um, the officer then begins to uh, encourage Mr. Sheets to move and he is not doing so voluntarily uh, the entire way. You can observe him uh, cursing uh, back at the officer using the word Nazis and the, um, the, the words that uh, were discussed earlier. Um, 
this was competent substantial evidence to um, sufficient for the jury to uh, convict Mr. Sheets of disrupt, uh, disturbing the peace. Uh, in terms of the sufficiency of disrupting a school function, uh, the school resource officer testified um, that Mr. Sheets was there. I don't believe there was any evidence that he had permission to be there. There was no legitimate business there. Um, he wasn't there. Uh, and it was the specific time that he was there uh, during the very chaotic portion of the day in which ages, I, I believe ages four to 11, the kids are being dropped off at school and they're walking into the uh, area where he was standing. Any school walkers were walking there as well. Um, there was testimony from the school administrator that he was, uh, that uh, the school dismissal process, or I'm sorry, the tardy process had to be suspended that day. She had to station another uh, administrator outside the area to make the students feel more safe. They can be seen on the video um, at some point uh, directing traffic to try to get it to move. I believe the normal dismissal process was the most chaotic on the day that he was charged with. Um, and ended. It wasn't a dismissal. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, um, arrival or, or drop off, drop off area. Um, and there was testimony that that day was the worst day of the three. Um, again, the jury was able to see the video. Um, so I believe that was sufficient, competent, substantial evidence to, uh, to sustain a conviction or survive a judgment of acquittal. Um, additionally, any of the, the word the words uh, that were used, um, again, State v. Saunders and LJM kind of placed this type of, that type of language on top of that. But it was more than that. It was his conduct. It was an overall conduct. But the words do fall into the language of LJM. Um, and his behavior, uh, intent, I, I believe there was some argument about intent. I just want to address that briefly. Um, intent is, is hardly ever or almost never a basis for a judgment of acquittal. I think the jury can infer that from the evidence. Um, I think this behavior is very akin to Meineke, which was recently decided um, with the sister court, where, but it was probably more egregious because that was a high school and the language was, there wasn't uh, foul language or anything like that. It was preaching and that was enough, similar type evidence enough to sustain a, a, a judgment of acquittal or, um, Moving on to the uh, issue two, the Williams rule evidence. Um, the, as I've stated in my brief, the service was in the record. Um, it, the prosecutor sufficiently represented that he served it properly. Even if it wasn't served properly, I believe the motion in limine was heard by the court and argument was heard and the court made the determination that this was sufficiently similar to and relevant towards his lack, a lack of mistake um, and also a motive and intent, which is a requirement under the, uh, the statute. So I believe it was relevant. It came in. There was no objection to feature of the trial. Um, there was no motion for mistrial. And um, I believe the jury instructions adequately demonstrated um, that, that, I'm sorry, there was a, a, jury, a special jury instruction before the evidence was read where they're not to consider this. Um, for any other purpose other than what it was used for. And I believe it was used for the purpose that the state uh, intended it to. Again, intent, lack of mistake. Um, if there are no further questions, uh, we rely on our, uh, our brief and we would ask that you affirm Mr. Sheets uh, convictions and sentences. Thank you. Council mentioned engagement by the parents. There is a short, less than 20 second um, portion of the video recording that shows Mr. Sheets speaking with another, with a, a, apparently a parent, some driver of the vehicle that was pulling out of the drop off area. We presume that was a parent. We don't know that. But there is nothing about that interaction that suggests that there was about to be a fight or even what Mr. Sheets and the parent were saying to each other. Nobody testified about that. Um, 
as to the person who was awakened by the bullhorn, there is no question that Mr. Sheets did not have the bullhorn or the siren. The uh, gentleman who lived across the street was in fact awakened by the bullhorn, but that was part of the counter protest. That was not Mr. Sheets doing. Council mentioned that uh, tardy access was suspended on that day, or the tardy procedure, I guess, was suspended on that day. Well, that's interesting, but it still doesn't tell us whether or not any student was actually late to class or whether or not any student missed any instruction at all. We also don't know uh, how often on what other days or when or if the procedure for dealing with students who were late uh, was suspended. Uh, I'm sure none of us has ever been late to school, but uh, we recognize that other people can be late and often are late. Their schools have uh, ways of dealing with that. We don't know from the testimony here how many students were late or whether it was more or fewer than students on other days. Council mentioned his brief and that presents an interesting question um, with regard to the um, similar fact evidence. When council wrote his brief, he apparently had had some difficulty distinguishing what was similar fact evidence from what was direct evidence um, in the discussion of the similar fact evidence. I wrote a reply brief, I'm not going to try to read it, which sets out in great detail which lines and phrases were similar fact evidence that counsel took as direct evidence. Now, that's important. And the reason it's important is if my learned colleague had difficulty distinguishing the similar fact evidence from the direct evidence, then jurors may have had the exact same problem. And it is very, very likely that they did since the jury, all the jury knew about the law of similar fact evidence was the jury instruction. So if there are no further questions, I would ask the court to reverse the um, uh, convictions or the uh, withholds of adjudication on both counts and to remand this case for dismissal. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, our next uh, case uh, this morning, <clears throat> Avatar Properties, Inc. Go stand somewhere else, dude. Go stand somewhere else. This is free speech. Time. <laughs> You might have a disease. You're a walking hypocrite. You might have a disease. 
my hearing doing that Shut up. he damaged my hearing I I now I can't really I can't I can't say he just damaged my hearing this is legally protesting you should be ashamed of yourself for being un-American where's your car at Andrew Dude, I am leaving. Don't at? fucking touch my Where's son. Your car at? Dude, go to your car. Go to your this, car. I am legally protesting. You don't pro you don't want that in front of little I am Come legally Let's protesting. Go. Let's go. Dude, I want you're violating my civil I don't rights. Care. Take it up with the court. Did you hear him say I don't this? Care. Go ahead. Did go you ahead. hear? Dude, go. get the fuck out of my go. space, man. Where's your car? Get the fuck get out of my the, space. Get away from the kids. I, I can this. fucking leave. Let's go. Let's Dude. go. Let's go. Dude. Go to your car. Wherever your car is. Hey, Anthony, go to your car. can you get the supervisor? Go to your car. Get Come the on. supervisor. He's car. touching my shit. Go to your car. Go to He's your touching car. my shit. You're not going to harass these kids. This is car. not harassing. This You're is harassing this these is, kids. You're this stopping is, traffic. I am You're not stopping traffic. traffic. Get Bullshit. Go. Go. I am go legally on, protesting. Then protest away from the school. I can put Quit Let's fucking go. touching my shit, Let's man. Go. I got a shoe. Go. I got a shoe. Get your shoes. Get your shoes. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And you're uh, telling me to leave. Why? I'm telling you because you're calling a disturbance. I am right not. There. You're stopping traffic. You, I did not. I'm not here for no reason. Watch I did street. not. I did not. Watch the pole. Watch the pole, Andrew. I did not. I caught. Andrew, don't call me cop. It's Detective Delgado. You got it on your camera. Let's go. Come on. Quit Let's fucking go. touching me. Get away from here. Fuck you. I don't care. Whatever you think that that's going to hurt me. Watch the polls. Let's go. Let's go. You're not going to be over here terrorizing these kids. Terrorizing? You're ter Come on. Let's go. I am fucking waiting Let's for go. people, Let's ass go. fuck. You're not going to terrorize these kids. You protest all you want over here, but you're not going to be in front of that school. Seriously? You heard me? You got me on camera? What, you think I'm worried about that dog on camera? Wow. You really think I don't care about that camera? Let's go. Go to your car. Wow. Wow, nothing. Don't go back to that school. I'm trying to cross the street and you are fucking assaulting me, Whatever. ass. Whatever. Hold on. Let this idiot crawl. Wow, you're the one that's a fucking Nazi. You don't even know what it is to serve. Oh, for the founding fathers, you stupid. Fuck you. You're out of here. Get out. Fuck you.